What's up guys, it's Holiday Anthony and welcome back to the Civic Vlog that you hopefully know and hopefully love because in today's video, the Civic is running a bit cold. Let's fix it. Alright guys, welcome back to a good old fashioned Honda Civic vlog. You know, the one you hopefully know and hopefully love. Because in today's video, we're going to be replacing the thermostat on my 1999 Honda Civic. So the other day, I was driving during a bit of a cold snap, roughly 30 degrees Fahrenheit or so, and I noticed that my temp gauge was just going lower and lower and lower and lower. And before I knew it, I was under the sea and I was like, yep, that is a stuck open thermostat. So with that said, we're gonna be replacing that today on the Civic. It should be pretty straightforward. It's a pretty simple job, but I wanna document it just in case anybody needed help or you just wanna see me wrench on the Honda Civic. So with that said, we have some parts over here. I'm gonna go over those really quick and then we're gonna jump straight into the job. All right, so here's what we're working with here. And most of this you can actually pick up off of Amazon. So I will put the links down in the description below, but we have our spill proof funnel kit which is just a go-to, it's a must. It's gonna help bleed and burp the cooling system and keep the mess inside this container, meaning it's not going to spill all over the front of the radiator and the core support and all that jazz. And then we have our OEM thermostat here, which I believe this one fits like 30, 40, 50 different Hondas, I can't remember, but it does have the gasket on there as well. And then lastly, we have our genuine OEM type two coolant from Honda. Is it necessary to run OEM coolant? Absolutely not, especially on a 90s Honda that can survive off of pretty much anything, but I wanted to do it right, so I got the good stuff. So anyways, we're gonna pop the hood. I'm gonna show you guys where the thermostat is located, kind of what we need to do to get to that. Then we are going to get this coolant drained and jump into the job. All right, so here's a quick and dirty on how to find a thermostat on a D-series Honda from the 90s in five seconds or less. Come to the left side of the engine, find your lower radiator hose, follow this hose all the way up, and bam, it's gonna take you right to your thermostat housing. You're gonna see your clip there as well as some 10 millimeter bolts and the sensor. That's all gonna come off. That's gonna help you remove that housing and get straight to the thermostat. Now, if you have the OEM air box, it takes up a little bit more space here, but chances are you can still get to it without any issues whatsoever. So really, this is a very, very simple job. Anybody can really do this. I think the most time consuming thing is really just draining and burping the coolant. So with that said, we're gonna get the hood back down, get the car up in the air for a second, turn that knob, drain the coolant, and get started. All right, so with the Civic jacked up here on the front with an extra jack stand underneath it, we're gonna hop underneath the car, and I'm gonna show you how easy this is. This little hole right here already has a perfect cutout, and there's gonna be our drain for our coolant. So this is gonna simply just turn. We're going to go ahead and go Lefty Lucy on this, and this is gonna start to drain out, just like that. And we're gonna go to the top of the car, and then we're going to unscrew the upper radiator cap. And this is gonna help drain out much faster. Now you can also drop the car down just a little bit to get it more level, to help it drain out a little bit faster. Don't crush your pan, especially if you're low. Sounds like it's taking a massive leak, is what it sounds like. A few moments later. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes or so, and most of the coolant has drained out. We still have a little bit of a trickling every once in a while, so I'm keeping the pan under there. Most of the rest of the coolant that's gonna come out is gonna be near the thermostat once we remove that housing, so we'll simply just move that pan back there. Now, I didn't mention this because it should be extremely obvious, but do not attempt this on a hot vehicle or something that has just been ran. Let it sit for a few hours. Otherwise, this thing's gonna pop off. It's gonna explode. It's gonna catch on fire. You're gonna be naked, wet, and afraid and wondering why you even attempted this job in the first place and you just don't wanna have to deal with that. So just make sure the car is cool before working on the cool system. So that, that's kinda, that's lame. I shouldn't have said that. All right, so now we're gonna get the hood into service mode here, which is arguably one of my favorite parts about being a Honda owner. Get this propped up and bam. Dude, this is how all Hondas in every single video should be worked on this way. Not the half hood prop, full hood prop, dude, because look at, look how much space, look how much light. It's like a completely different video now. I love it. All right, just to clear up some space, I'm gonna remove the intake. It's also gonna keep me from scratching and dinging it up as I try to get in there. So I was thinking about removing the strut bar as well. 
Did I already drop a nut? It's gone forever. All right, so removing the intake did actually give me quite a bit more space here, and it also gave me some more light, so you can actually clearly see everything in here. Hopefully the camera's able to pick that up. So we have our sensor here. We can go ahead and unclip this, and just pull that off and set that aside, kind of wrap that around, and then we're gonna have our 10 millimeter that we need to get to from here. All right, so you could probably get to those bolts beyond that, but we're gonna go ahead and just remove the lower radiator hose here, just to make this easy. Grab our little channel locks, clip onto that. Pull this up, and then you're going to yank this free. Yank it, it'll, it'll come. It's just a little cold, a little stiff. You got this. All right, so I've come to the conclusion that I am not taking off the radiator hose, and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the thermostat housing and pull everything up, because that thing is not coming off. I've been yanking on it, I've been using picks, it is just stuck on there. So anyways, I found that this extension here on the 10 millimeter coming through here can get you on that top bolt really easy. That's already loosened up. You know, it wouldn't be a car project if everything went as planned, right? That's not how things work. So for that ground, I didn't want to have to take off the stupid ground, but whatever. Get that off. Okay. It's kind of hard to see, but it's just, it's just literally right underneath that sensor there. And it just, that was a really easy one to get off. Let's see if I can get you a little light in here. There it is, that's our ground. So I'm just gonna put the bolt back in, pray that that doesn't get lost. All right, so we are going right underneath that sensor there, but we're just gonna have to kind of angle this down. All right, this is actually much easier. So all I did was take the harness here off of the clip, push it around, pushed it down. That actually gave me a ton more space to where now I can get to that bottom 10 millimeter bolt. Oh yeah, much easier. We're on it now. There we go. Easy peasy. All right, there's our lower there. Now it's just time for that upper. And we are good to go. There's our upper. This. It's gonna leak out and hopefully drain all of that pan. Nope, nope, it's going on the garage floor. It's going all on the garage floor, damn it. Yep, that's just, that's a massive mess. And here is our thermostat. Honestly, I was expecting this to be much dirtier than what it is. It's really not that bad. There's not really a whole lot of corrosion on here as well. You just kind of take a little wire brush and clean up around that outside. But that is, that's pretty clean. Get that cleaned up and then go through the little shop towel and uh, just wipe it out. But this is this is pretty clean for what it is. I'm not seeing anything build up on here. So, dude, not, not bad at all. Easy. All right, so here we go. We have the old thermostat and we have the new thermostat. I have to wrap the gasket around the new one to get it just like this one. Uh, but you're gonna notice that there is a little pin here and a notch in the gasket. You wanna get that gasket around that upper pin and this is going to sit in there upright just like that. So this would drop down, go in there with the pin in the upright position and there's a little kind of notched area where this is gonna sit in there. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this around and uh, get it in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and slip the thermostat into the thermostat housing. So there's a little like two notches there where this gasket is going to slide into and it's pretty obvious once you kind of get down at an angle, but this is just going to go down in here. You're gonna find those notches and it's going to sit upright kind of just like that. Ground is back on, so we are good to go there. I think we're just gonna get this hose clamp back up on there and start plugging things back in.
All right, so we have our funnel kit here and it looks like we're using the small blue setup here. So this is just gonna slide over the top just like that. We are going to find where this is going to screw in on, possibly something like that. Twist it, nice. This is going to slide in over the top like that. And bam, that's our funnel system. And then this right here just goes like that and plugs it up when we're done. And we just lift the whole thing off and then clean up the excess and that's it. It's, it's amazing, it really, really is. All right, so we are sitting at the top of the radiator. So we're gonna start this thing up here. Turn off the air for right now, but then we're gonna put it on full heat. Give a little massage here. One eternity later. All right, so I think all in, I think I let the car idle for about 30 minutes, which might sound excessive, but it is pretty damn cold outside, so it took a while for it to get up to temp, and I kind of cycled back through uh, with the hot air on and off just to kind of see if I can get any last bit of the bubbles out. So I uh, shut off the car, and at this point, we're gonna go ahead and get this off of here. So this is gonna stick down just like that. Oh, that's amazing, dude. That is so cool. And then we're just gonna go like, oh, I can just go like that. Dude, what a, what an awesome, what an awesome thing. An awesome invention. All right, quick drive around the block just to make sure everything's working. And so far, so good, dude. That temp gauge is locked in right now. And uh, that is significantly better than what it was before. Wonder if any uh, OGs here will remember this area here. This is actually where I first introduced the Honda Civic over in that parking lot right over there. All right, so getting it out onto the road. Yeah, dude, that thing's not moving at all. Dude, that thing's locked in, man. Yeah, that is so much better. Basically what was happening before is that was just, it was just dropping like immediately. Right when I got on the gas, it would just drop. I mean, I was like below the sea. So uh, thermostat issue, easy. All right, I think I've stretched this video out for too long. So anyways, guys, hopefully you guys learned something new or maybe just enjoyed watching me uh, wrench on the Civic for once. Uh, as always, if you guys enjoy the Honda Civic content and wanna see more, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Salt Anthony, peace. Steady.